Okay, so let's pretend that this is your 3D printer. Today we're going to talk about something that you don't really hear a lot about, and that's twist axis compensation. So what is twist axis compensation? It's something you don't really hear people talking about. Now imagine you have a print head here, but you have a probe that's mounted in the back. Now the job of a probe is to make sure that the print head and the bed are always at a set distance from each other. The issue is the nozzle in the front here doesn't have a job like that at all. It doesn't talk to the probe and it doesn't really know what's going on. Now, what if there was a way we could fix that where the nozzle could tell the probe exactly what's going on in the front? It's important for the firmware to understand the relationship between the nozzle in the front and the probe in the back. We'll exaggerate this issue so you can see exactly what's going on. We'll keep the probe at the back because its job is to always maintain an equal distance from the print head and the build surface. But you can see that while our probe is making contact with the table here, our nozzle isn't. So the probe wouldn't understand that the nozzle is not touching the build surface. Now I'm going to show you this issue in action. So one of the issues with a lot of 3D printers is even though these rails to the eye look like they're perfectly in line, they're not, and it's very difficult to get them perfectly in line. Now, the top of this rail or the bottom of this rail could be slightly in or out from the one on the other side. It's very difficult to get them perfectly in line. So I'll go here and illustrate exactly what happens as you slide across the x-axis. So as you slide across the x-axis, you can be perfectly on your build surface, and then all of a sudden, it twists up. So let's pretend this piece of paper right here is our build surface. Now you can see the yellow right here for the probe has maintained constant contact with the build plate the entire time. But the nozzle about halfway through due to the twist in the rails has lifted up and the probe has no idea that the nozzle is no longer making contact with the build surface. So how do we solve this? So twist axis compensation will run a calibration to take your print head and probe several points on the bed. And as it's probing, we'll take a piece of paper or a feeler gauge and we'll tell the nozzle exactly how far it is away from the bed. And this tells the probe how much it needs to compensate as it moves across the mesh, making sure that the nozzle is always at the correct distance from the bed. So what's another way we could solve this? Well, we could take the probe and mount it on the x-axis and make sure that the y-axis doesn't have any offset to the nozzle. So now that we have the probe mounted to the x-axis to the nozzle, you can see if the nozzle lifts up off the bed, so does the probe. But we know that the probe can't do that because the probe's job is to always maintain a constant state between the distance of the print head and the bed. So one of the reasons I prefer a side-mounted x-axis probe is when they don't have a y offset, they're less susceptible to axis twist. And this makes it not only more reliable, but uses less calibration to get the printer up and going. So that's axis twist compensation. Now, if you've been trying to get a perfect first layer and you're seeing that no matter what you do, there's always one side of the bed where it's just too high and you can't get good adhesion. Well, you can go ahead and try axis twist compensation and you might find out that this has been the ghost you've been chasing in your machine the entire time. So go ahead and give this a shot and see if it does anything to help you out. And you'd be surprised what access to his compensation can actually do.